In order to open the discussion, I decided to prepare a small presentation. So, uh, uh, the presentation will be shaped around five areas which, for which we would like to discuss later on. So, I will start the, with my presentation now. So the first area is the question which was already raised. It is the need for trans transformation of the National Regulatory Authority. So it seems that the, this need of tra for transformation is more than obvious uh, at the present. Um, as a clear indicator, uh, I will uh, 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 shortly summarize the uh, commission recommendations for markets which are uh, uh, recommended to be analyzed by the national regulatory authorities. So back in 2003, uh, there were 18 markets, 7 at the retail level and 11 markets at the wholesale level. In 2007, the commission recommended 7 markets to be analyzed by the national regulatory authorities, 1 at the retail level and 6 at the wholesale level. In October 2014, with the third recommendation from the uh, Commission, it is only four markets which are uh, recommended to be analyzed. So that is a clear indicator that the uh, market of electronic communication is becoming more and more competitive. So uh, let's we, we 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 have seen this slide uh, slides in, uh, uh, in the morning, but. Uh, in the mobile broadband, uh, in the fixed broadband access, uh, for in 2014 we have uh, four bigger operators who are offering uh, the service to end customers. So the incumbent has 41 percent. Uh, 14 percent of the market share is uh, possessed by the Dizum, uh, also 14 by Telecable, and 11 percent by Operator One. Also in the mobile market. We have three operators with uh, the leader um, Makedon's Telecom, followed by the VIP operator and one operator, and the third operator is the MVNO operator who recently entered into the market. So it seems that the initial mission for establishment of National Regulatory Authority uh, is, uh, uh, is uh, uh, accomplished. Uh, the other need for transformation is driven because of the introduction of new, new technology. As we can see, as Peter was, uh, already said, um, the four markets which are recommended with uh, the EU recommendation from 2014, two are from the fixed and mobile termination rates, which probably are going to vanish in the near future, and uh, the other two are for the wholesale broadband services. Uh, the first one is divided between the, the local and central location and the second one is uh, with additional quality. So it seems that uh, many of the markets which exist uh, previously are now merging to the uh, new services uh, which are um, offered uh, through uh, fiber to the home networks. But there are new challenges which are emerging uh, for these markets. So, I will briefly uh, mention just some of them. It is maintaining the integrity and security of public electronic communication networks, promotion of efficient investment and innovations in new and contemporary infrastructures, preserving the net neutrality concept, and uh, also contributing to the high level protection of personal data and privacy. So, the first question which I would like to discuss later on would be for the uh, uh, where should national regulatory authorities focus its work for the years to come? Not just the agency, but uh, 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 broader view uh, about all national regu regulatory authorities who exist today. Uh, the second area is mobile broadband <coughs> connections and consumption. So, uh, as we have seen, uh, uh, the penetration of mo mobile broadband uh, subscribers 
is less than 50% of all mobile connections. Uh, we've heard that in Finland it is 120, above 120%. So we think that the um, penetration in Macedonia is uh, below the EU average, which is usually more than 50%. So it is another challenge what should we do and what should operators do and what regulators should do in order to increase this uh, broadband penetration. Another thing is the consumption. consumption. So as you can see for the third quarter, the consumption is more than one petabyte uh, per quarter. It is one million gigabytes. So when uh, you divide it, this, this number with the subscribers and uh, uh, months, uh, three months for the quarter, you come up to the, uh, to the number of 353 megabytes per month consumption per, by the average mobile user here in Macedonia. And when you compare that with the EU, which is around 275, it seems that the mobile subscribers here are consuming mobile data more than the EU average. And uh, what about the revenues? Um, it seems that the revenues are not following the growth, the growth of the revenues are not following the growth of the mobile data uh, consumption. So if the growth of the mobile data consumption doubles every year, um, the growth from mobile revenues is smaller. So for 2014, uh, the mobile revenues accounted for 17% uh, uh, compared to the non-data revenues. So the second question for this area is what should regulators and operators do in order to increase this penetration and mobile broadband subscriptions and how to increase the revenues from mobile data services. We've heard also from the previous presentation that the 10% increase in the broadband penetration would result between 1 and 1.5% 1 increase in uh, GDP, domestic GDP. So that means that uh, investment in next in uh, broadband networks will attribute to, to for bigger investment, opening of new jobs, economic development, and this is very important for uh, countries with uh, low income. So the countries which has a higher income, the impact of the broadband penetration is smaller than for the countries with uh, 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 with uh, uh, smaller income. Uh, more, uh, broad, fixed broadband penetration compared to the uh, uh, from the total households in Republic of Macedonia accounts for is about 55 percent. So 55 percent of the households in Macedonia uh, has fixed broadband penetration. And when um, uh, when we compare which technologies are available, it seems that the most uh, prevalent technology is DSL, so uh, less than 50% of the total broadband connections are provided over DSL technology. 27% uh, are provided with cable, while only 4% of whole uh, broadband connections are provided uh, over uh, fiber to the fiber to the home uh, or next generation access networks. But on the other side, when we compare with the coverage, Fiber to home coverage has, uh, is about 20%. So uh, it is obvious one thing, and it is a uh, low, uh, low take up, which is more than, only more than 10% of the whole um, uh, deployed uh, fiber to the home networks. So here we have a problem with the, uh, with the demand for next generation access network. And uh, biggest Coverage has the DSL technology where 98% of the uh, households are able to, 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 uh, to, to have internet uh, via DSL technology. So there are many measures to, in order to promote this, uh, uh, this broadband penetration. Um, there are supply side measures like sharing of telecom infrastructure, co-deployment and co-investment access to non-telecom infrastructure, broadband wholesale offers, 
single point of information regarding all network infrastructures, but also there are also some demand side uh, measures in order to increase the broadband penetration. Uh, I would like to hear about which of these measures to promote the supply side of broadband is most important for the development of next generation of access network and why the practical implication application is very limited. So, as we, uh, as we have seen uh, into the law from 2014, beginning of 2014, all these provisions from the EU best practices have been introduced into the law, but it seems that the practical, um, pra practical uh, application of these uh, measures is very, very limited. Discuss is the gap between the rural and urban area. So um, we've seen from the presentation from Analysis Mason from the report which was uh, uh, published on our website that uh, with fiber to the home networks only 44% of the households could be uh, covered with this type of network uh, and uh, this coverage can make, make, uh, will have a positive uh, financial impact for the incumbent. In other words, um, for 10-year return on investment, uh, for this 44% of the households, the net present value of the investment will be positive. Uh, that means that uh, operators will probably will not have any incentive, economic incentive to invest in uh, in other, in the rest of the, in the, uh, for the, uh, for, for the rest of the country. Uh, so it seems that uh, uh, the, the gap with this new technology between urban and rural, uh, rural areas is becoming even, even uh, bigger. We have universal service fund, fund but uh, I question whether this universal service fund would be enough to reduce this digital gap between urban and rural areas, or there are other mechanisms which should be introduced, like public-private partnership, state funds, or uh, others. And also the, five, uh, the fifth uh, area, it is the roaming. Agents for electronic communication, uh, with amendments of the law for electronic communication, uh, introduced uh, reduction of the wholesale roaming prices with the countries with whom uh, Macedonia has signed an agreement for such a thing. So, uh, on 10th of March, the director of, or, of the agency adopted the decision to determine the maximum prices of roaming services in mobile communication networks. With this decision, the prices uh, should be reduced to the level of the, roaming, the third roaming regulation, which is uh, 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 now effective in the European Union. And in order not to de disturb the, uh, the business plans of the uh, operators, we in the, introduced a glide path, glide path uh, so the first reduction of those prices would be in, two, uh, in uh, uh, the uh, next month, and the uh, last reduction would be on 1st of uh, July 2017. So the question would be, what should regulators and operators do to have reasonable prices for roaming services for end users? So we can, I will sit over there now. So do you want to continue on English or yeah, probably we can all of us understand Macedonia? Let's practice some English. Anyway, we продолжим на македонски. Hey, я раз позабавлю. Yeah, and Peter is all here also. We are just questioning whether we should uh, continue the discussion in English or in Macedonia. Because anyway, there are uh, there is translation. So anyone for, from you who would like to, 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 to understand us and who have a problem doing that uh, can take the... I don't see any 
<laughs> oh, we do not have any. So we will continue in English. <laughs> we have two participants who do not understand Macedonian. That it, okay. So the first question, I would invite uh, my guests to, uh, to, to, uh, to give their opinion uh, about where the National Regulatory Authority should focus their work for the years to come. I don't know who is willing to answer this. Dragon, please. Okay, we, we made a little agreement who will uh, elaborate which of these issues which uh, Sinisha will raise. So, it is on me to take uh, discussion on these issues uh, on the focus of uh, future uh, regulators' activities. Uh, it, it seemed to me that it is uh, a coincidence or maybe it's natural that uh, my discussion will be very, very like uh, the discussion of uh, the great discussion, the great presentation of uh, Mr. Landy. Uh, I was really excited to hear uh, such a structured demonstration and elaboration of, uh, of a way where to, to uh, orient uh, its forces and where to look the focus in future on the field of regulation uh, because it is uh, based on um, on uh, market uh, uh, rules, on market laws. Uh, first, uh, let's get back a little back uh, uh, when uh, when the regulation in electronic communication started to uh, to be imposing. First, uh, it is uh, arising from the transformation of the sector. Which, which was a public uh, some 30 years ago. And in first, uh, first in the uh, United Kingdom, I'm, I'm talking about Europe now, first in the United Kingdom and then in all European countries, it started to liberalize and uh, transform into, into competitive uh, market sector. Uh, the regulation in all sectors, including electronic communications, is uh, a measure for, for facilitation of the market. It should not be taken as something that is uh, uh, that must be enforced in any in any case. There must be specific reasons and must be specific a way how to uh, how to uh, adopt regulation and how to enforce regulations. Uh, in electronic communication, obviously, that was uh, the, the, the crucial need for regulation was the uh, was the. Uh, creation of uh, a market that will function. In the beginning, uh, the sector was private, or was public, with one incumbent operator, and that incumbent operator had a lot of powers because it's a natural uh, position uh, on, the, on the market. Uh, in order to, to uh, motivate investments from other investors and uh, involve more alternative operators in the provision of the services, uh, the regulations in electronic communication started uh, to be imposing uh, in the, within the European countries and it raised on the level of uh, uh, regulatory framework uh, within the directives of the uh, European Union. So, we, uh, today uh, we are facing a lot of differences among all these countries. We see a lot of markets that a function. On the other side, we see markets that uh, are not functioning well. Um, in the beginning, the high margins of the sector was a very good motivation of the investors. But as the time was passing by and uh, as, uh, as the, the prices, the competition was increasing, those margins started not to be so favorable and so good in order to attract the investments in any case. Uh, there are, there are many, many specific differences in the level of uh, development of the sector, as I said, in, uh, across, the, across the countries. So, the regulations need to be considered local. So, a local, uh, a local environment, a local uh, circumstances has to be taken into account when making a decision for a regulation. Not the general opinion about, uh, about that. So, of course, comparing with, uh, with other countries is a good uh, tool in, uh, in, uh, in any project, in any activity, but 
First of all, the local circumstances must be prevailing in the, in the decision for, uh, for uh, adoption of regulations. Uh, in Macedonia, mm, in the beginning, the, the liberalization of the sector started uh, uh, in 1998 with the privatization of the, with the, okay, the package, the, the process of privatization of the uh, incumbent, and uh, the incumbent has been privatized in uh, the year 2000-2001. After that, uh, there was introduction of competition in the mobile uh, telephony with uh, the second and the third operator later, and uh, the competition in the other areas which are more uh, more grounded on the on the fixed infrastructure started some uh, several years later, during 2007-2008. In the meanwhile, there were some small, I would say, very small uh, internet service providers who didn't create specific. Uh, volume of, of the market, which can be considered as uh, development of competition. Unfortunately, I would say unfortunately, the, the investments were present, the heavy investment, heavy investing process uh, was present only in the beginning of, uh, of the process in Macedonia. Only uh, the, the first uh, competitor in mobile telephony, the company where, where I'm coming from, uh, placed a huge investment between uh, 2002 and 2005-2006 in a volume of some 200 million euros. We didn't uh, face any similar volume of investment uh, until then. Yes, of course there were investments. Uh, I'm not saying, saying that uh, no, nobody is investing today or in the meanwhile, but uh, such a comparable investment uh, we, we haven't uh, uh, faced. There, there is, of course, a reason why. Uh, investment has to be motivated by the market. There is no other motivation for investment except, uh, except uh, uh, its return and, uh, of course, uh, making a profit from it. So, uh, in order to see investment, in order to attract investment, we must rely on the market forces, on the market uh, rules. We, we must not forget that we cannot enforce investment. Nobody is enforcing investment and, uh, oh, oh, okay, let's say that somebody can enforce investment, but that investment will fail. It is not an investment that will be fruitful. Uh, that is why my opinion is that the agency has to focus on the market, first of all, and it is the only, and it, it is the, the, uh, the rule that it emerged actually for. I, I didn't say, I didn't uh, have this uh, elaboration of the history uh, for nothing. Uh, this is uh, the, the main reason why the agency exists today and it has to focus on its core responsibility. Uh, of course, there are some other responsibilities that uh, are. Uh, are um, legitimate for the agency as uh, managing of the limited resources and so on. But I will say that they are not so crucial for the existence of the agency because those can be can be done by any other authority, not specifically national regulatory authority or something. So uh, the market, the development of market, the development of competition must be in the focus of the of the of the agency. Uh, I like very much one of the slides that uh, Mr. Lomley presented uh, within his presentation. We cannot go back now, but uh, it was the, the it, it was uh, related to the enablers or uh, uh, or, uh, or some measures for attraction of the of investment. I didn't see there any kind of enforcement of investment. I only saw. Uh, the first point was the competition, so the first point in the list was uh, competition, and then the other points were some other alternatives for, uh, for attraction of investment and development of sector. So that is why my, my opinion as a conclusion is that uh, uh, the agency has to focus mainly on the, on the competition on the market and, uh, and let other institutions do the, uh, the responsibilities within their general authorizations or within, the, or within the, uh, their specializations, as is uh, um, security, then uh, consumer rights, 
privacy, protection of data, and so on. We have institutions for all, this, all, all those issues, and they have to be carried by those specialized institutions. And the agency has to make a results in the area of market, in the area of competition. That is, that is how I expect that uh, the investment will come back again here. Okay, John, thank you. Um, we can move on the second question. And um, as uh, we have seen today, uh, the biggest problem is that uh, it seems that there are not enough uh, revenues from data services. And when compared to other countries, uh, uh, let's, for example, uh, I've seen somewhere that in the United States, uh, data revenues have surpassed non-data revenues in 2013, fourth quarter 2013. While in the EU, it's expected in 2017 data revenues to surpass um, non-data revenues. In Macedonia, we have seen that only 17% from the revenues are from data services. But we have also seen that we have a very low arm of uh, data, mobile data subscription. It is uh, between 5 and 6 euros. Uh, so I will we'll ask uh, Vladimir, um, uh, what is your opinion? What should operators on what should agency not do? Agency not uh, intervene in uh, this sector in order to have uh, better uh, subscription penetration and also better revenues from data services. Thank you, Sinish. Interesting uh, parallel with USA, I would say. And I'm not surprised that uh, USA is, is getting momentum as a passing and comparing to Europe. For this in general trend, Europe is in general lagging behind uh, the USA and uh, Japan, South Korea. Why we could argue maybe one more day, or at least we could agree uh, that Europe uh, lost this momentum in, uh, in determining the proper strategy, I would say, to to develop uh, the telco in the future without making so much burden on the operators. But this is yet another uh, story. You said that uh, in Macedonia some 70% coming from of the revenue coming from data, mobile data in particular. Uh, in, my view, in my view, I would not solely analyze the mobile data without uh, focusing on fixed broadband. Why? For me the question, question is uh, what is the premium that, uh, for instance, users of our networks are ready to pay for the mobility? Because uh, mobility is something that is different than the fixed broadband access. Uh, I think that uh, regulator did some research some years ago and the conclusion was some 10%. So it's very low. It's very low in comparison to what investment has to be done in order for the mobility to be ensured. Of course, here are the new technologies, radio technologies, LT is in front of us. We are advancing with it. It will come LT advanced after 4.5G, as we have uh, possibility here at 5G some years ago, uh, later, sorry. Uh, but at this very moment, the fixed broadband in this country is the biggest enemy of the mobile broadband, I would say. And uh, when we analyze when the regulator will analyze. My proposal is to analyze the broadband market as a one whole. Uh, speaking for the fixed broadband, we have to admit that there are more tools in the regulator's hands uh, to force certain movements. One is the, of course, uh, making proper conditions for competition in the, in the infrastructure. State funding is here. And then the broadband also offers uh, of the of the incumbent, which is the most advanced with the with the uh, rollout and deployment of the fixed broadband, not uh, simple one, but rather advanced one like FTTH. So the ruler have to be always on the table with this regard. And if you make certain conditions uh, that mobile broadband cannot survive alone, but in conjunction with in complementary with the fixed broadband at the end the mobile operators could just use the fixed broadband to package their mobile offers I would say and this is the way how the operators in general have to behave in the future 
in order hard to arm to to boost the penetration of our product and not solely with the uh, with the regular access technologies that are in front of us that at the end are not so cheap but they are expensive. I don't know if someone else would like to contribute to this uh, question, but um, uh, to be honest, I don't believe that uh, fixed broadband is a substitute in, with mobile broadband. Uh, mobile voice is definitely a substitute to a fixed voice because anyone who would have a mobile phone does not have to does not need to have a, a fixed uh, fixed line for voice and for the conversation. But maybe it is very important. Yeah, they, they somehow are connected. But uh, I really do not believe that the mobile and fixed broadband are somehow substitute between each other. Because you said that, like uh, that the fixed broadband is the biggest enemy to the mobile broadband. <laughs> Just to, to remind you on the uh, speech of the vice uh, chair of the on the bed, I'm a bit surprised for that. But he said that. In order to be mobile, you, you need to have fixed product, if you remember. He, he said that, meaning you are, you are getting some high-speed uh, fixed line in after, and after by uh, Wi-Fi, famous Wi-Fi in your home, you are moving across your rooms, I suppose, and this is the mobility. I'm a bit surprised of that uh, view, but obviously we cannot uh, just separately analyze the mobile fixed product at the end. Hopefully that it will be some technology after five years with the 5G that will be heterogeneous in the end, uh, that will combine a mixture of, of approaches and techniques that uh, users will be really capable to, to have premium from the mobility with the rather similar prices uh, and, and with that are for the operator side, like for the fixed government. Okay. Do we have some questions? Peter? You, yeah, that's it. yeah, I just wanted to comment on this. Why is it that um, the revenues, data revenues are so low here compared with the USA, for example, and some other countries? Well, I think the pricing, retail pricing model for Europe for data, fixed and mobile has been basically flat pricing, all you can eat data pricing, so much per month for how many ever gigabytes you want to download. Whereas the North American pricing model and in some other places, they do a lot more pricing per gigabyte. Now that's a retail pricing issue, so if demand for gigabytes are higher, the revenues are higher. Whereas in Europe it's flat pricing, all you can eat pricing. Now, I don't know what the pricing model here is in Macedonia, but I wouldn't, uh, by the way, recommend that the regulator ever gets involved in that retail pricing. That's down to the operators to fix that problem. If you want to get the data revenues up, why don't you charge per gigabyte? Yes, Branko? Yeah. So, practically, when we are talking Branko, yeah, Telecom, and T-Mobile, <laughs> still. <laughs> So, uh, you know, my, my opinion about the, the, the distribution of the revenues in terms of voice and, and data, uh, to a certain extent I think that we are still somehow oversizing in our accounting the voice revenues. So it's also a question, how do we allocate the revenues within the MRC which are including voice and data and SMS in the key selling proposition that we are currently having on the market. So this is one thing. Uh, what is happening also is that the purchasing power on the market is pretty low. So practically when we had, I don't know, 100 minutes MOU, I don't know, five years ago, or 150 or 200, we had an ARPU of 15 euros, and now we are having uh, 800 minutes all net, Plus, we are having, having two gigs usage, and still the customers are paying even lower. So the competition with its own, practically, and reduction of the MRC, but practically with the with the introduction of the higher data usage, and we are facing a situation that at the moment the smartphone penetration on the market is near 50 percent, uh, 
the max per customer is increased and everything uh, is happening at the same time, we are not having a kind of a delta because practically we are keeping the same MRCs. In terms of the pricing model, uh, yes, we do have some flat fees where we include some gigs, of course, maybe some of the operators are having real flats, we are talking about 10 gigs included in MRC of 10 euros, which is really something very cheap. But this is the fact that we are having on the market. Uh, but even uh, for, the, for the operators where we have one gig included, the absolute bet or activation of booster, of additional add-on, during the month is very low because the people do really like to keep within the committed monthly fee and they are satisfied with the low speed practically that they are getting after the with the speed decrease after the, the usage of the bundle and wait until first of the next month in order to get the to have the, the speed boosted up. So this is the practically the, the reality that we are having on, on Macedonian market. But at the end of the day you know we are here we are talking about 10 euros flat revenues if you see German market or some other market in EU, then you are talking about 30, 40, 50 euros spending. And here for us is super premium segment, which is almost not existing in the market anymore. Okay, so obvious one of the factors for such a low uh, data, data, data income uh, from the mobile data services are the lower purchasing power and uh, uh, of the population here uh, in Macedonia, but not just in Macedonia, the, 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 the figures are not quite different even for the region, so that is somehow connected within this region. Not So it is not always good to compare yourself with the Western Europe, Europe or the USA, where, as Branko said, they, they are spending 30, 40 million. You just, when you again mentioned USA, to yep. say one interesting maybe. Yep. Maybe comparison, Mr. Mr. Landy, we also here to hear. Our uh, lovely owners, uh, America Mobile, uh, tell us uh, one recent success of, of theirs in the USA. Uh, it was the period when the Birdman, the movie, was uh, uh, promoted to, to winning movie for Oscar. Uh, one day after, they on their American uh, users, USA users, uh, enabled very, very next day, so they were only party who enabled it uh, for $4 uh, download of that movie. And it was tremendous download of the movie in the USA. I don't know how many millions users did, did download, and if you multiply with 4, you will achieve tremendous numbers. But I have a question now, do you think that this model could fly here? How many users are ready to pay four dollars for Burnman when they got it most probably two months by Pirate Bay torrent download it for free? I mean not free but uh, in, within the subscription they are paying flex subscription, they are paying for the fixed internet access. So this is a bit different models that could not fly everywhere. Luckily they are flying flying on some markets. We are here to cope with it, but uh, at the end of the day, we cannot achieve so much in this market, especially as Branko said, the purchasing power is not so big here. You mentioned also that 8 to 10 euros is this uh, standard wholesale offer, and here the pressure is much higher on the, on the comment with 3 euros, 3.5. But uh, I think that, that uh, if, you, if you see the ARPU levels in the retail, retail uh, offers, you will see that this 3.5 euros is not so bad. Maybe. Maybe my colleague disagree now, but this is the reality in the market to which we are operating here. And unfortunately, we can not do much uh, when there is there is a question how we are going to push the revenues. And the things are connected and cannot be analyzed uh, one uh, separately. Let's say again. Yeah. Okay. So I suggest now to move to the um, to the broadband, fixed broadband. Uh, so uh, from the presentation from analysis Mason, we have seen that there are many measures which can be uh, applied in order to boost the penetration.
from demand side and supply side. What has what is what I'm more interested in is for the uh, from the for, for the measures from the supply side. So as far as I remember, they said that if uh, access to all infrastructures, like all utility infrastructures, uh, like not just telecom infrastructure, but uh, uh, the other companies like telecommunication, electricity, um, uh, sewage system, water supplies, uh, uh, if this measure is applied, uh, it will brought, it will uh, it will contribute to uh, fourteen percent. Uh, increase of uh, fast broadband users. So it seems uh, this measure is more powerful than the measure for um, providing an access to the wholesale broadband services, so-called bitstream service. Um, as I said, in the law for electronic communication from 2014, all these, uh, all, all these uh, measures uh, have been introduced. So Peter said that, um, uh, that the European Union is uh, is uh, uh, is copying from the law for electronic communication in Macedonia, but actually uh, the, the 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 decision, uh, uh, not the decision, but the uh, directive for uh, cost reduction was not uh, ad adopted yet, but it was drafted. That's why uh, while they were preparing the law for electronic communication in 2014, they 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 they. Um, uh, they uh, transposed all these uh, uh, provisions in this uh, directive for cost reduction in order to deploy the next generation access networks. But what I'm more interested in is that uh, we have many, many, many measures, and it seems that all of them, uh, except single point of information, which is uh, which is going to be uh, which project uh, is going to be uh, finalized soon. So. Um, uh, we are in the process of signing an agreement with the cadastral system in order uh, in order to acquire their data for the uh, for the um, uh, network uh, uh, net network infrastructure. Uh, uh, so, uh, except this one, all the others are already uh, there are provisions uh, in the law. And but it seems that uh, their practical uh, their practical uh, usage is very limited. Uh, I will ask uh, Vladimir, can you uh, 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 can we see what is your opinion about this? Why and how much they can co contribute to the uh, bigger penetration of the fixed broadband? Okay. Uh, maybe we have only a few words here, and maybe Solana can add more. Uh, coming from the company. Side is better maybe here. Uh, I think that this uh, unique information exchange point that was envisaged within the law have to have to start functioning as soon as possible. Every dollar counts for us in the, in the period in this uh, period when we are uh, trying to, to to save. And I think that coordination is essential between operators, especially those who are uh, deploying. On the, on the field, and uh, I, I do expect very soon this this point will start function. And uh, with regard to, to infrastructure, uh, also states should be involved here with, with uh, any mean as much as possible. Not that only the operators and the parties who are playing should uh, loan to this. Uh, and where is, is is needed, where is possible, state should support. This is my view, and I think uh, at the end, uh, if the the cost per single uh, bit per second is, is lower for us, in that case we are going to be able to keep the prices on the level desired for users, and uh, the margin will be higher. Uh, I would like just to add something. I was quite uh, surprised when I uh, seen that the uh, uh, state aid is. Okay, uh, obviously it is very important, but I, I was surprised from the previous presentation that, uh, uh, that uh, uh, because of the impact that uh, broadband penetration has on the GDP, it would uh, return the investment from the government for three years or less than three years. So that is very that is very important and it is very uh, very something which should be should be stressed out in order to. 
to just in, in order to introduce to the government that it is the smart investment that is something that is going to get back to, 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 the, to, the, to, the, to the budget. Okay, Stulanka, what would you like to add to this? I would like to add uh, that I'm very sorry that maybe the minister is not here uh, since we're having this discussion. Uh, but I would like to, if you go back to, to your presentation where the measures from the law are stipulated, it would be good to look at them. Uh, we were discussing about these measures uh, and which of them is uh, most feasible uh, being most supported by the regulator. I would say uh, all of them are very important uh, for uh, investing and deploying uh, NGNs. Uh, NGN. So um, in this sense, how, I, uh, how do I see um, any of them being moved forward uh, by I taking the active role in being some kind of a hub of all these uh, of all these measures uh, and supporting documentation uh, projects uh, initiatives uh, that will go into the government into the respective ministries into the respective uh, institutions for example uh, institutions relevant for stating uh, in order to boost this what is written in the law Otherwise, we'll just face uh, with uh, the words of uh, uh, the previous speaker, Mr. Landi, who will say, who will always be able to say that we were in advance of the EU, uh, just putting it in the law. Um, so, in this, in, in this sense, I'm expecting, uh, since the law is rather fresh, uh, uh, let's put it that way, um, the the agency will develop uh, a very precise. The, the agency for electronic communications, uh, I mean but by agency, uh, a very precise, uh, very focused uh, plan of how uh, all these measures will be put uh, in some kind of a stream so that the industry can actually use them. Otherwise, the industry is of course using uh, and thinking of co-deployment and co-investment, but that is on the side of the, of the business. Now we are talking about how, how I uh, the agency uh, and the state institution can support the investments by doing uh, 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 any kind of uh, any any kind of, of push on these on these measures. So in this sense, I'm expecting that I should come up uh, with a program of uh, maybe uh, a state aid boost or a public-private partnership, and maybe uh, go around the municipalities, for example, uh, and educate. Uh, their staff of how they can uh, actually have a use from this. Uh, there are some initiatives that we see, that we work on uh, with the municipalities, but they are very minor. So in this sense, uh, the business he has an interest to go and educate some of them, but I think it's should be the role of the, uh, of the agency. Also maybe educating them some uh, about the, uh, some of the funds or any kind of funds that can be used for this. Uh, I'm aware that we as Macedonia uh, are lacking uh, a significant uh, amount of, of, of funds available to the other uh, EU member states uh, that are uh, actually being used, but I think it, it should be your battle uh, to um, somehow explain to the government that the example of the region, in, uh, what was presented here, the example of the region in Slovenia should be taken in consideration. Uh, and having 70% uh, of the investment being covered by, uh, by the government. In, in this sense, maybe I, I can uh, make a parallel uh, with the with, um, USO uh, Fund, the Universal Service Fund. Um, maybe we should think of uh, changing our approach, your approach, uh, of how this fund uh, uh, can be used, uh, and also in, in bridging the, the digital gap. The, is obvious, uh, obviously existing uh, in, in Macedonia and uh, how it can be used uh, not only for covering the costs uh, for being a uh, universal service, service operator but actually um, somehow supporting supporting uh, the, the deployment of, of services based on, on, on this fund. Uh, I know that there are challenges, discussions about uh, this uh, within the European Commission, uh, whether it should be used uh, in that sense or not, uh, but I, I would like to urge the agency, I'm really sorry that uh, it's only you representing the NRA now uh, here, but uh, just to see 
how uh, just to emerge uh, uh, the agency to think about these uh, more details and, and faster, not to let this uh, provision from the law you know, be, be left over just for our <laughs> reminding of what we can do as, as an industry and business. I would definitely support that. <laughs> Thank you. As obvious, I, um, I completely agree with you that the municipalities should play a very, um, in, are playing a very important role in order all these measures which we already mentioned to be, uh, to be put into the practice, the municipality, municipalities in Macedonia has to, 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 to play a, a big role in, uh, for this. Uh, and uh, also, uh, we um, should reconsider the fund for the universal service because uh, probably uh, it, ma it makes no sense anymore to have a fund of the universal service for the public payphones or, uh, or the access for the fixed uh, voice lines. But we are, uh, we are um, uh, working up, uh, according to the European Union uh, directives and with the last 2009, there are still uh, uh, the national regulatory authorities should designate the uh, provider for universal service for the fixed uh, uh, for the access for the fixed line, with together with 9.6 kilobit kilobits per second payphones, uh, directory inquiry service, and uh, the packages for the disabled uh, disabled people. Just a little comment on this. Yeah, it is not uh, uh, an obligation to do it. It's an opportunity to do it. So, if you feel that it is needed, if you feel that measure that it is uh, correct, then the agency will mandate uh, or will uh, uh, will compensate uh, the costs for pay phones, for an example, from the universal service fund. But if it is not convinced that pay phones are something that are uh, essential need of the population, then it does. Uh, it does not have to do it. So this is why I'm arguing always and many, many years I'm arguing uh, with many, many colleagues from the agency formally and informally on the issue specifically on uh, pay phones and widely on uh, more uh, items of universal service. But uh, just, just one follow-up uh, sentence. Um, even, even if we agree that you are following some uh, EU regulation and that you are supporting uh, the provision of the aforementioned uh, services uh, as uh, universal service services, also now you you announced unofficially that the broadband will be part of the universal service. So this was my point uh, when I was commenting about the fund. Uh, there will be part of the fund dedicated for this. And in this sense, I am emerging that the agencies to think a bit broader and to actually uh, not only think of covering the costs for for uh, this service, providing of this service, but stimulating it, its modernization, its uh, future development, and so on. In in, in this sense, uh, uh, lowering the, the digital uh, the digital gap of, uh, in, in Macedonia. So it, it, that was my in that in this sense was my my comment. Not to maybe do a total revision of the universal service uh, uh, concept but just to, to look a bit forward and maybe to emerge you to do it a bit faster, <laughs> the, the tender, because uh, it will be from uh, usage of all the consumers. Yeah, uh, I completely agree with you. And for uh, the information, for your information, we have uh, already asked for the opinion for the Ministry of Information Society in order to provide this uh, 2 megabits per, uh, per second access as a universal service. And uh, after that, we will go with the public tender in order to, uh, 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 to, to, de to, to dedicate the operator who is providing, who is going to provide this universal service obligation for broadband. Uh, for broadband. Uh, but I would suggest now to go to the last question. It is for the roaming. Um, as you uh, have seen, uh, Macedonia, together with Montenegro, Serbia and Bosnia and Herzegovina have signed an agreement in order to reduce the prices for roaming services. And uh, 
director has adopted the decision in order to achieve this goal. So, Slovenka, I'm going to ask you, um, it seems that we have a quite uh, 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 high prices for roaming services and I think uh, this is a good start in order to reduce the prices and get the, in order to have more affordable prices for end users for um, both for voice and uh, roaming data services. Uh, but uh, what is your opinion? What should we do in the future in order to... Do you support this initiative? Do you see that this is uh, uh, not uh, in line with your business plans and uh, how to achieve uh, a more affordable prices for roaming services for end users? We all know that I cannot agree with you. <laughs> uh, what you mentioned before, uh, high prices, roaming prices, I would say relatively high prices uh, because maybe you put them in correlation, or I'm sure you put them in correlation with the uh, prices of the uh, services on a national level, which we all agreed here <laughs> that are very low, uh, not only that the purchasing power of, of our consumers is low, but definitely the competition um, on the market uh, reached this, this level of, uh, of the services on the national level. So in this sense, uh, even when we, we had a prior discussion uh, prior bringing this uh, agreement on the Balkan roaming regulation, uh, the argument from our side, uh, I believe uh, the colleagues will agree on this, was that, um, that the prices of the roaming, uh, of the services in roaming, were not seen um, in absolute value, so to say, but uh, very relatively compared to the national uh, services. And also, also uh, I would say that the actual prices of the services in roaming were not taken in consideration, but uh, this regulation was brought from another purposes, so to say, <laughs> more populistic. Uh, in this sense, uh, I, I cannot agree uh, that this was maybe the, the best move uh, of the agency uh, in a period where we are facing um, almost a full regulation. We are regulated uh, on almost everything that is uh, possibly uh, being regulated according to any uh, EU, uh, <laughs> EU regulation uh, brought so far. Uh, and as uh, Draga mentioned before, um, the incomes are dropping, our interest of investment as an industry is dropping. Uh, you all know that we have our shareholders who also are considering this. Uh, and I think this regulation was brought in a very uh, inconvenient time where we were trying to justify any investment uh, in, in Macedonia and, and now we are being heard from another side uh, as, a, as a revenue stream. So, uh, in this sense, I, I, I cannot agree uh, this, that this was, uh, this was the best move, especially because uh, uh, the actual prices of the roaming, I'm, I'm thinking about prices that the, the consumers were getting uh, when using packages for data, data packages for uh, voice services, uh, were not so bad. Were not so bad. They were practically uh, on, on a level that is not regulated. Uh, and and uh, you, you just uh, created a situation for us to do uh, a lot of work. Uh, at this moment, I practically see it for nothing because it's only Macedonia, according to my information, uh, that is somehow ready for this. Uh, maybe uh, I don't have the right information, but uh, the counterparts uh, from the other countries, uh, our partners, uh, are uh, informing us that uh, according to a time plan that is being stipulated in this regulation, uh, it won't be it won't be uh, possible to have it implemented. Maybe with one country, but I'm still not sure about that as well. Um, and in, in this sense, uh, I would like <laughs> to maybe ask you to reconsider this and the timing of this uh, of, of this uh, regulation. I know uh, it's now in the law; it's in uh, in a lot of conclusions. So the provisions for providing of roaming are in the law, but the decision is uh, all about the timing and when this uh, 
uh, regulations should, should start. So. Uh, actually, I can inform also this forum that we have uh, communicated with all the partners. Uh, we've done our job so far, as far as I'm informed from, from our colleagues, uh, colleagues as well. Uh, but I don't see anything coming back from the other operators. So if we don't start doing it now, we will not be able to uh, to accomplish the time frame given in uh, in the conclusion. So. Uh, <laughs> This is from maybe a formal legal point of view, but uh, it's also uh, one important uh, point of, of, of this regulation, despite the, the part with the, with the prices. So in this sense, maybe I, I have a counter uh, question to you. How do you see this coming in and being uh, um, fulfilled with all these obstacles that we're having? Uh, and, and just for, for the public, uh, the ones that are not, not informed, uh, the, the decisions for this in the other countries are being uh, put in a court procedure of whether they're in line with the law, the constitution, I don't know what, depending on the country. So uh, I don't, do not foresee a very fast track of uh, uh, so solving those, uh, those cases. So what is uh, I's um, plan B, <laughs> maybe, so that we can yeah. have our plan we B? Have a plan B. That is to sign more agreement with other countries. <laughs> that is a plan B. Uh, okay, you are the lawyer, but as far as I know, if uh, uh, and it is uh, the rule not just in the Macedonia, but for also other countries between Montenegro, Serbia, and Bosnia and Herzegovina, if they um, 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 uh, uh, if they go to the to the court and uh, disagree with the decision that does not prolong the execution of this decision. So I hope that the national regulatory in Serbia and Montenegro and Bosnia and Herzegovina will, will, will find a way how to persuade them uh, the same like we did uh, and persuade you to, in order to send the... <laughs> but no, no much time in front of us. Yeah, unfortunately we have uh, one month and uh, so maybe, more than one month. Maybe still hoping better to call the regulators to ask are they able to contact this or not? Because otherwise we will not able to... They have a study visit, uh, not study visit, but sightseeing. Maybe later on uh -huh. during the dinner we are, we are going to ask them from Montenegro and they are, unfortunately, they are just from Montenegro because the Serbian uh, cancelled their, their visit here in Macedonia. But uh, we will ask them. I know that there is a problem in Serbia and they, they appealed this decision from the uh, from the regulator from Serbia, Ratel, in front of the court. But uh, we'll see how this uh, this um, will be solved in the future. This is just a, a, a comment in line with uh, how uh, Dragan started this uh, uh, panel discussion, uh, trying to maybe use this as a study case uh, of why the agency doesn't have to always follow regulation that is applicable in other countries, but actually uh, and to rush to be the first one or the second one in this, but rather let the market do its, uh, yeah. you know, its, its movements uh, and, 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 and maybe give some more time because uh, we are a fragile economy, uh, not a very strong economy, and maybe such experiments are not most welcome. To be to be honest, if we left the market to for uh, especially for for data roaming, I don't see that the market uh, having this experience for the future. That the market that the operators uh, somehow they will introduce lower prices for data roaming. You said that there are some packages, but it is not. Um, it is just an opportunity. So, if someone does not is not aware of this package and left the country with that roaming turn on, uh, they uh, may come up with a bill of 400 euros for sending three or four uh, pictures from the concert. That is what happened, to be honest, in uh, uh, with one subscriber here who went to the concert to Belgrade and uh, the subscriber was not aware of the, the price of data roaming, uh, 10 euros per, per one megabyte, megabyte and uh, uh, she sent uh, four or five pictures, that is what, what she said, and uh, end up with a bill of uh, uh, 400 euros for, 
for this privilege. privilege. So probably it cost her more to send the pictures uh, with all together uh, traveling uh, uh, tickets for the concert and everything else. <laughs> okay. I, I um, agree, but uh, I, I want more urge the agency not to draw uh, such big decisions and conclusions by certain cases uh, that we can enumerate uh, from one to five. Uh, and and, and um, I would, I would uh, uh, like to just uh, give a counter uh, example on this. That maybe this lady didn't know the price of the, of the police services or whatever other service and she can talk on the phone for two hours with her boyfriend with telling the, the, the concert, right? And, and then come back uh, in Macedonia with an enormous uh, uh, bill. There are other measures that, in parallel, the agency is uh, actually applying this uh, information.